today's session is an interview format, as you probably determined, um, and it is on painting the journey, the relationship between art, creativity, and dementia. My name is Lori Kelly. I'm Provincial Coordinator Program Operations for the Alzheimer's Society of BC, and I've got the privilege of being today's host. So right now I am absolutely delighted to introduce today's presenters. Myrna Norman, give everybody a wave, Myrna, has, Hi, been, living, has been living with dementia for the past 13 years. She's a published author, a member of the society's leadership group of people living with dementia, an active and passionate advocate for people living with dementia, and has been a regular participant in our lived experience webinars. Welcome, Myrna. Thank you. And Granville Johnson is a musician, an artist, a two-time Vietnam War vet, and a former Walk for Alzheimer Alzheimer's honoree in Prince George. Granville was diagnosed with dementia in 2016, and he openly shares his vulnerability, his fear, his humor, and his hope of living with dementia through his music. Welcome, Granville. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, welcome to you both, and let's set the stage for today's discussion. Let's start by talking about what creative activities do you enjoy? So, Granville, I'll start with you. All right, um, I'm a, a multimedia artist. I do digital collage, which in on, on the web. I also sometimes print it up and make it, you do formal portraits. I, but my main, Direction now is in poetry, which I turn into song and performance poetry. I have I have a new band called the Day Will Come Project, and we're working on our debut album. And the album is about living with dementia, and and the um, various aspects of that, as well as other in, intense but re and very real realities that are part and parcel of my life and, and experience. So I this the music is for not only dementia people primarily, it's also for those who love and know of those who have dementia. And that and that is basically my main my main artistic focus at this moment. Great. Thank you very much. Um Myrna, what about you? Yeah, art is uh, somewhat new to me. Um, I think it's been the last two or three years that I've been involved and and so it's opened up a lot of doors. But first, before we do that, Lori, I need to do a quick thing to see how many names I managed to write down. Hello, Cindy and Lester, Diana, Diane, Tom, Nancy, Clark, Joan, John, Chris, Rebecca, Patty, Kay Turnbull, Chris, Wanda, Frida, uh, Ian, Ingrid, Jennifer, Dean, Sarah, uh, Marsha, Martin, Mary, DC, Ty, Arabella, MDs, Frida again, Cynthia, John, Michael, James, Brian, Larry, Michael, Maureen, Will, Primasoyus, Erlinda, Rhonda, Nancy, Kim, Mona, Martin, Ryerick, Mona, James, Sharon, uh, Sandra, Deb, Gail, Gordon, Jake, Ann, Laura, Mary Lou, Wanda, and I probably missed somebody, but I wanted to show you what we can do. <laughs> Isn't that a clever <laughs> trick I have? So, so listen, you know what's really cool is when I finally realized that I had something to give, uh, when I built up enough confidence in myself, I did that through art projects. Um, I wrote poetry, I started to paint, I've written a book, actually three books now, and it's only because somewhere along the line, through my art, I learned that I, as a person living with dementia, had every right to be happy and joyful 
and do the kinds of things I wanted to do. Pleasing me was my only uh, measuring stick. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I, that's great. So we talked before um, this session got going. And one of the things that we talked about is how has dementia impacted your creativity and your art? Myrna, I'm going to just bounce back and forth, but I'll start with you. So I, I didn't know I had creativity. Um, I never thought I could write a book. Um, I never thought I could write poetry. Remember in high school and there was all those pandemeters and things we had to fit it in and it didn't have to rhyme and it just got so crazy. I just sort of cut it out of my life. Now I write poetry and I find it kind of satisfying. So it was through art, through some wonderful people at UBC, um, et cetera, that I learned art is a way for me to express my feelings, whether they be happy feelings or sad feelings, but art gave me enough confidence to do that. Great. Granville, what about you? How has... Okay, um, go ahead, Don. No, I was just uh, going to okay. say, how has dementia impacted your creativity and art? Well, um, um, it's focused me. Prior to, I've been a lifelong artist. I also um, became a teacher. I taught elementary school, high school, and, and adult education. In the, in the teaching capacity, I incorporated art in every, in every subject. So kids were learning all their subjects. No need to go through the list. We all know what they are by incorporating art projects such as reading a story, then developing characters in the story that they could incorporate into a play built on the story, then drawing, drawing images to support their, their play, and eventually performing that, that story for their parents on a, on a parent day in class. And that I use that in primary and, and in um, uh, intermediate. In adult education, I taught adults how to write their, their stories, working with the First Nations, uh, uh, First Nations essentially. So art has been a, a living breath for me throughout my life. What dementia has done has focused me on the, 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 my art in expressing the dementia experience. I, because I came to understand that it, the only way I was going to survive this is to use it. Otherwise, it was going to kill me. So I had to get serious about it, and I turned once again to my art, and in this case, to music. Um, I've been a drummer for 35 years, hand drumming, African drum, djembe, but I never sang, or sang rarely, I should say. So to start my new path, I taught myself to sing. And when I, then using that, I went out and, and pulled in some dear friends of mine and created a band. Now we're working on developing a method to, to, to share this experience through music to, to, through the, to the world. On, on, as far as publishing go, I have a song on the web called The Day Will Come, and it is on Facebook. I mean, I'm sorry, it is on YouTube. And you can, if you don't know, I don't have the link at hand, but you may um, Google my name, Granville Johnson, and The Day Will Come will, will appear. And that is a song based on 70 years of my life and basically taking me from birth to not too long ago. And it's all about letting go what you thought you could not live without while you're in the process of discovering what you truly have deep down inside 
and can use to live better. Fantastic. The day will come. It will come. Thank you. And so and I will let everybody know it's actually in the helpful resources link. Um, uh, it, the helpful resources document that I've put a link in the um, in the chat box. And I apologize just to maximize the size of these speakers. I am going to turn off everyone's video. So I do apologize. Those of you, there's been a few people who I've been turning it off and they've been turning it back on. So apologies for that. I just wanted to let you know why I'm doing that. And it's to make Granville and Myrna a little bit bigger on this screen. Also, Granville, uh, folks are mentioning that your video camera seems a little bit pixelated, so maybe you can move just a touch, touch closer to the, I'm not sure what's going on, and uh, that's, well, hopefully that will help. So thank you for that. Um, that's great. I'm, it sounds like then to kind of, um, continue on with that theme, it actually sounds that there are some positive aspects that have come into your life because of dementia, not in spite of it. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Myrna, I'll start with you mixing it up a bit. Yeah, it's it's really weird to to verbalize that some positive things have come out of such a uh, dreadful diagnosis, but trust me, they have. Um, <clears throat> I get I get to concentrate on making my life better. I've learned that I can be happy, that I have a responsibility to be happy um, and to be joyful. Um, and honest to God, I didn't know that before. Um, I lived in sort of a, a sense of um, mourning. Um, even though I was still able to partake in activities, a part of me was always uh, sort of playing down who I was because I should be in mourning, I believe, for all these years. So the last few years have been absolutely wonderful, Lori. I've been able to uh, write, look at this little book. It's called Sometimes My Papa. And it's about what kids might think when when Papa doesn't want to play with them anymore, and when Papa's always having a nap. And it, it explains to them that my Nana says that my Papa loves me no matter what. Uh, sometimes he has good days and sometimes bad days, and he can play with me on his good days, and that makes me happy. And I think it's really important to share these little um, antidotes with children because uh, I'm, I'm way off your question here, but children always take responsibility for things that happen and, and it's not their responsibility, but they need to know the whys. And so part of what creativity has done for me is allowed me to pick up on these things that have always been important, but never quite uh, uh, enabled me to, to take it in hand. Thank you. That's fantastic. So dementia kind of inspired you to, uh, to enact your creativity. Yes. And Granville, you have spoken, you just spoke about how you feel dementia has impacted, uh, impacted you. But if you, um, if, if you are looking at how dementia has impacted you positively, how would you respond to that? I know that's been a, that's a difficult topic, as Myrna said, but how would you say it has impacted your art and creativity in a positive way? Oh, I think you're muted. You muted yourself, Granville. <laughs> Here I am. There we go. Yep. Uh, uh, it's, it's taken a while. For me to 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 reach this feeling but now i think i have a hold of it and i'm trying to run with it and that is to look at dementia as a gift as a gift that keeps on giving as 
as something that you can, that is special, that makes you special, and gives you the power, the ability to 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 touch your world and those around you in a way that it, it that it's impossible without dementia because dementia opens up a way of of communicate communicating with non-dementia people simply because you have dementia they may have preconceptions and stigmas toward dementia people but as you share yourself share as you grow within yourself in feeling hey yes i have dementia but i can i know what i can do with it i am still here and i have something to say when they start hearing your voice and seeing your expression especially in the early times before dementia tends to even strip that away then you have an opportunity to enrich the world that is that has closed to to what to help one person open his or her mind a little bit more and that is a gift and you will not have that without dementia giving you the power to reach out and touch someone in that way mm. so that's mm. i i i i cling to that and i work with that that's so powerful i just see a comment here in the chat Ian says i like your attitudes gramble and myrna work with the tools you're given look forward own your future that's a, a really well stated way of articulating what you guys have both shared you know another thing Lori, that came out of out of sort of my involvement as art is a closer relationship with my husband because mm -hmm. i would write a piece of poetry and then i would read it to him and ask him what he caught out of it and and it was wonderful way to open communication so now we're really on the same page uh, we can talk about when i need him to help me and when i need him to let me be independent and and everything because of this that uh flows beautifully into uh something that i wanted to kind of dig into a bit we've been talking about how dementia has impacted your creativity uh granville you already had a well-developed musical creativity and myrna you've talked about that a new area of your life has opened up but what you just talked about is kind of the reverse so how do your creative pursuits help you to live as well as possible with dementia. Um, Myrna, I'm just gonna get you to start to kind of continue on. You, you talked about the fact that that's such a, a lovely way of articulating that it opened up things between you and your husband. Are there other ways that your creativity help you live well? Oh, for sure. I, um, I find such joy in reaching out to other people with dementia just to talk and be with each other most of the times and even those without dementia just to have that open conversation i found through the years because i've been an advocate now for quite a while that there's so many sort of the things we don't talk about that need to be talked about and i'm to the period of my life with dementia that that none of those things embarrass me i have that that filter is somewhat gone so um so i can talk pretty comfortably about any subject whereas i certainly didn't before i had a very strong filter perhaps two or three of them so that's quite a change in my personality and it's only been beneficial not only to me but to my grown children my grandchildren and my husband that's fantastic. Thank you. Grandpa, what about you? Uh, exploring that flip. So how has your creativity helped you to live well with dementia? It's, um, well, it's, 
it's opened up the world of advocacy. As a musician at prior to this, I was all about the music and about the, the, the power of the moment. Not really about changing the world or helping the world get better or helping the, the, my, the, the life get better within it. Dementia has given me the, the, the motivation to, to dare to be my true self. And that in terms of personal relationships, that is, that has been a real wake up call for myself and my wife. And because, and it has clarified many things between us that were not spoken about, talked about, taken for granted. Those that that's not the case anymore. We talk about everything. We check in about all the time we we have it creates a tendency to misunderstand and misinterpret dementia does so constant so we are constantly double checking and rechecking and that that has enriched my personal relationship and given me the freedom to dare to even challenge others along the same line so i i find that that uh that my art has become more powerful for me as a, as a way of being a whole human being and daring to, not daring, wishing to and determined to let others be themselves and accepting them as themselves. Acceptance comes easier now. And that's to me is three quarters of the battle is learning to accept myself and accept others and that gives me the, the that gives me the, the 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 joy of of um oh just being okay you know just being okay cool honor you look like you've got a want to jump in there. No, I was just thinking that, you know, it takes a lot of courage. And, and um, Granville has a great deal of courage. Um, that he, Granville is wearing a special t shirt that was designed in part from a poem he made and the other part from a group we belong to called the Action Committee. And so I have to, Lori, say one other thing about the Action Committee and there's other members on here today. Uh, we have managed to, oh, isn't it beautiful? We have managed with the help of, of professionals to design a toolbox. And when I first heard it was going to be a toolbox, I was imagining a metal toolbox. This is an app that's online. And if you're a person with dementia or a caregiver or anyone else, you can go into this app and you can uh, press the dementia button and it will come up with all kinds of of suggestions and ideas and clues and information to help you deal with dementia eventually we're going to have one for a button for caregivers and a third button for healthcare workers and i hope doctors go into that because often doctors tell us to go home and get your affairs in order and what i took that to mean was go home and get ready to die so it's taken me that long to discover through art that instead of getting ready to die, I got ready to live and I live well to the best of my ability every day. Thank you, Myrna. I'm just going to share the picture again of the T-shirt. It's a little closer in. And Granville, I wonder if you can just uh, talk a little bit about this T-shirt and how you guys came up with this design. Oh, are you muted? Yeah. Forgot again. We yes. uh, we have the action group. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to wanted to put put together something that that would that would uh, give people pause for thought and 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 re, uh, reduce 
this, uh, deal with the stigma that comes with dementia. So we, we, we brainstormed for quite some time and came up with, came up with the concept that often you hear uh, live well with dementia. And we didn't want to do live well or living well because it would seem to be overused. So we thought a little deeper, how can you live well? What does it take to live well? Well, we, when people want to live well, often they want to celebrate. They'll celebrate birthdays, Christmas, special holidays, special uh, occasions within their personal and private life. But, that, but we weren't thinking about a party. How, how could we celebrate and within the, within the context of living with dementia? And the, we came to the awareness that by in our, per, in our daily life, in the little things and the big things, all the things that make us good and happy and makes others around us feel good, that is a celebration. So celebration is just living. It's just being. It's just going for it. It's just being yourself. It's just accepting others. It's just day-to-day -day business that gets done or maybe doesn't, and you don't worry about it. Celebration is, 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 celebration is what it takes to live well, and that's why celebration is what it takes to live well with dementia. So dementia, celebrate life. That's beautiful. And That's beautiful. we came to celebrate life. Now, okay, then how do we depict life on a t-shirt? That was an interesting, interesting conundrum. What is life? How do you depict life? Well, we said, okay, life is all the things we do and all the things we experience and all good, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So then we realize if you take all of that and throw it on a, on a shirt, it looks like a multicolored hodgepodge, <laughs> a mess, <laughs> a beautiful mess. But, and that's life. Life is a beautiful mess, and we go through it. So on the dementia trail, man and a woman are running up this dementia road, and it's, it's not so fun, not much fun. But eventually, though, they get to understand that what enriches this road is experiencing life itself for all it's worth. And that's what took us into that beautiful mess. That is and beautiful. That's how shirt was born dementia celebrate life that's fantastic i will um try and find out i don't know if the shirt is for sale anywhere but if it is i will put that information in the um when we post this video i'll put a link to where to get the t-shirt because i love that shirt <laughs> it's wonderful yeah Thank you both. So moving then from that, it's a bit of a jump, but what then do you find is particularly or is frustrating about living with dementia? Granville, do you want to start on that one? All right. Um, the progression is frustrating. I'm fortunate I have vascular dementia and my my vascular dementia was was uh the the seed of it was born in Vietnam when when I when I died as a result of an of a IUD explosion and they brought me back it was a brain injury and um that is that that um closed many many blood vessels and eventually evolved into dementia in my latter life, vascular dementia. But yet it does, my dementia seems to be progressing fairly slowly, which I'm really, really very, very thankful for. S 
still, uh, still I have recently developed an emotional instability and a uh, almost overwhelming anxiety and and fear. Mm. Also, my my short term memory is getting shorter and shorter. My long term memory is pretty much a gone. I have forgotten my childhood. Mm. I have forgotten most of my early life. Those things have cut me loose from a sense of a grounding. And I struggle to, um, to, to, to stay clear and okay within what feels like internally a perfect storm. And, but again, that's, that's what I have and that's where I am. And that's, and that clarity within that is what I have to give. So it so it uh it means that I can't be superficial. I'm deep from dawn to dust. I get on people's nerves with that. Cause I can't do small talk. I can't do um nonsensical stuff. It confuses me. I can't I can't recognize pronouns attached to nouns. Do not use he, it, or they, or them with me, because it makes no sense. Mm. So these these short these shortcomings, particularly because I write, is is is, uh, is something that um, that is my day to day struggle. Thank you for sharing, Gra Granville. Wow, Myrna, what about you? How how would you answer the same question? Where are your fr areas of frustration? Yeah, it can be really frustrating. Um, I'm going to talk about some other types of things. Um, I can't remember to take my meds. And um, and I thought my husband was giving me too many meds, so I thought I'd take that over myself. Mistake, mistake. <laughs> and I haven't told him yet that I made that mistake. Uh, I can't remember what I did five minutes ago, four minutes ago, three minutes ago. I can't remember which I take puffers and I can't remember. Did I just take the blue one or did I just take the green one? And that happens like instantaneously. So there's lots of those kinds of things. Um, sometimes I forget that I have to go to the bathroom and then it's too late by the time mm. I remember I had to go to the bathroom. And, um, and so all those, all those kinds of things that are happening to us, um, we can either wallow or we can say it is what it is and let's get on with it. Let's look for something that's going to cheer us up. It, it, it's easier, I think, when you're on a, when you're on an even keel or a happier keel, it's easier to keep that momentum up than if you're down low. It's very hard to climb out of a low, at least for me. And so I do my utmost to stay to stay on a more even keel. I don't try to do things I can't do. I can't cook. Um, they took my driver's license away years ago, so I've lost my independence to a degree. Um, it saves money because I can't go shopping all by myself. I have to go with my husband. So there's good things for caregivers. Um, it, it's difficult, but one of my daughters said to me once, mom, it is what it is. So accept it and get on with your life and live well. And I've really tried to do that. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I get I get lost in listening to the two of you and I keep forgetting, oh yes, I have to move on with the interview. Uh, so, I want to move a little bit and and ask you tell us about the importance of a dementia community to you and Myrna I'll start with you. You know it's it's vital. Um, I do a peer support memory group and um, and just having to spend an hour and a half once every two weeks. 
together, not online, together because we're all vaccinated, is the most satisfying feeling for all of us. There's a genuine sisterhood and brotherhood between us. We care about each other completely. We we do not judge each other in any way. Um, either any of us can come in and have a terribly bad day. Um, and that doesn't matter because we are all somewhat joined by this word dementia and we're all doing what we can. Um, we're not all going to be able to be happy and we're not all going to remain sad. Um, but you know what? We need to know that that's a possibility, that we can reach for that. Sitting in front of the television um, is not a good thing for you to do. We all know that, whether you have dementia or not. But I swear that the reason that I'm doing well, like this is 13 years, is because uh, I keep putting myself out there in front of people so I have to use my brain so much. And also because of the art. Who knew I could paint my border collie or I could paint a giraffe for my granddaughter? Who knew? But I tried and it worked. So, you know, just give it a shot. Don't don't just wait there. Give it a shot. Thank you. So, um, yeah, Granville, over to you, the importance of a dementia community for you. And I think you're muted. I keep forgetting. That's okay. <laughs> and Mark says, you really have a license here. All you have to say about to anything or anyone is just, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Use and, it. And it's a given. You, it's, it's done deal. Nobody complained. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I forgot. Um, the, the dementia community is, is for me, uh, um, I'm just at the beginning of it. I've only been a member of the action group for about a oh, year and a half, maybe. Uh, and they have, they introduced me to the, to the, to the wonders of having a true support group in that uh, that of like-minded people, but also not necessarily, we're not, all of us are very, very much individuals, <laughs> uh, staunch individuals, very different from each other. The only thing we share is we all have dementia and none of us have the same type, type of dementia. So there's differences there. But the, we are open to to supporting and being supported by each other. Their involvement with that particular group introduced me to the to the to the uh, reality of advocacy. And I've and I um I've taken that on. As one of our facilitators says, Granville, you've stuck your toe in the deep end. And for the, and advocacy is the deep end. It's, it's a willingness to give yourself of yourself and willingness to accept others who are doing the same. So I'm, I'm, um, it's, I, it's hard. It is hard for me to, to be on, on zoom calls and be present and be a, a, a clear contributor for an hour, two hours, three hours, however long it takes, it's hard. And afterwards, I invariably run through my mind going, what did I say? How did I say it? How could I have done better? I second guess and then I let go and move on to the next meeting or the next event or, or the next time. But this, this growing community is not just regional, national, it's international as well. And the richness that lies there boggles my mind. I'm really uh, very much uh, finding that it's given me a, a life, another gift in life that I would not have otherwise. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful. Hmm. So the support is there if we are willing to reach out to welcome it in. 
and that's what I'm that's what I'm all about now. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's so well said. And what I really love about what you guys have talked about is all the different dementia communities there are, or different aspects of the bigger dementia community. So there's groups through the Alzheimer's Society, there's the Action Committee. Um, Myrna, if I remember, you're part of the DASNI, the Dementia International Group. And so, yeah, um, uh, Maureen asked me to pass along to you both that you are both doing great. And she says, thank you. She, there, people are really finding what you're saying to be powerful. So thank you. I, I think, Lori, um, it's very hard for any of us living with dementia if we don't feel productive in our lives. So whatever it takes to help you feel productive, drying the silverware, folding the laundry, sort something, tools. Yeah, probably needs to sort out that toolbox and maybe the fishing box needs to be sorted and gone through. Wash the fruit when it comes home from the grocery store. Go out for breakfast. Maybe take another couple. Um, maybe you know somebody else that has dementia. Go out for breakfast together. Don't just stay home. Find ways to stay productive and busy. You, you. I was just about to ask, and now you've already answered for you. No, that's good. No, no, that's wonderful. So, what I, what I was going to ask is, what is it that you want people to take away from this webinar? So that's just such an essential thing. Um, is there anything else before I that you would like people to take away from this? And then I'm going to toss it over to Granville. The other thing that I think is really, really important is to get outside. And it doesn't have to be a nice day. It can be raining. It can be windy. You're waterproof. Get outside. <laughs> get someone to go for a walk with you if, if they're worried about you or make arrangements to go by yourself. There's all kinds of tools available now um, to, um, to help you if you might get lost. But do those things. Don't sit in your chair and watch it outside. Get out there. There's something about that. There's a saying that says nature nurtures. It's true. Thanks, Lori. Thank you. And Granville, what do you want people to take away from this? Oh, and mute it again. <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> Be patient with self. Be patient with others. Baby steps are a good thing. Silence is golden. Treasure it. Don't be afraid of it, either in, your, in yourself or others. This, the, you, there may be silence, but the wheels are turning, even though they may be turning slowly. Let them turn in and let them take their time. Be patient, especially in your art. Uh, we are, I as I am, my own worst critic, but let that criticism wash over you and then let it go. Accept what you have and others will do, do the same. Don't be afraid of, of uh, what would be called failure because it's only an opportunity for a more creative, for a different creative stroke. It's just, a, it's just a variation on a theme and be patient and patience will, will empower you. It will help you alleviate some of the anxiety, some of the fear, some of the doubt. Be patient, because those things cannot last in a patient form. They only last in anxiety, which is very agitated. 
patience is quiet. Let that quiet over consume you. It's okay. Very, very well said. Thank you. I just want to share some of the things that people are saying. Somebody shared a 16th century poet, George, probably either Herbert or Hebert, um, has an interesting quote, living well is the best revenge. So yeah. this person, so this person says, so let's live as well as we can. You guys are just exemplifying that every day. Um, and a number of people have said, Patty says, I feel such love and admiration to you both. Thank you for providing us with hope. And Nancy says, you two are so inspirational. I wish my loved one was listening. Nancy, this will be recorded and will be up on the website by next week. And so maybe you can share it with them. Yes, 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 says G. My gratitude and admiration for Myrna and Granville's openness and wisdom. And ditto and lots and lots of well said. So lots and lots of uh, positivity. So thank you both very, very much. If you've got any last thoughts, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've got coming up. So last few minutes over to you. And if anybody has a question or a comment that you would like me to pass on, um, just uh, put it in the chat box and I'll do what I can. I, I just want to say that my involvement in advocacy has done more for me than for anyone else. So in some ways it's selfish because I get so much back from, from s telling things the way I see them that it would go without saying that I wouldn't do this. Um, I, I want everybody that has a dementia to feel good about themselves. That's the most important thing. We are born and we die. And initially those events by ourselves, although we did need someone to help us being born. But my point is that be true to yourself. Just go for it. Just do it. Thank you. Fantastic. Ramble? Let's see, are you muted? No, you're not. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 we did need someone else, Myrna, no doubt, <laughs> to help us in, to help us arrive. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, we, it, we, we're born naked, <laughs> not a stitch. We, we, and dementia helps us emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, to die that way. Not mm -hmm. a stitch. We're naked as a jaybird. It's all out there. Your inner self is now the outer self. Trust it. Trust it because it's all you got. Beautiful. Yeah, really well said. Thank you very, very much. So on that, we're going to draw this to a close today. Please always know that you can reach out to our First Link Dementia Helpline. English services are available Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. at 1-800-936-6033. So thank you again very, very much. And uh, we hope to see you back again uh, at another webinar and hopefully at some of our online education.